Hi, I'm Rich Binsaka for the Propane Education and Research Council. We're here in Asheville, North Carolina to watch and learn about a multi-unit tankless water heater installation. In this case, the owner of this five-year-old 2,600 square foot home is replacing an existing 40-gallon electric water heater with two tankless units that are fueled by propane. Why two units? Well, that's what we're here to find out. So let's bring in Mike Hobson. Mike, Mike's with uh, Blossman Propane Gas and Appliance. Yes, how you doing today, Rich? Good, thanks. Before we get started, tell us kind of what we're dealing with in this house with regards to water heating right now. What have we, what have we got going? What we have is a 40 gallon electric water heater supplying the house, supplying two and a half baths and a 125 gallon jacuzzi tub. And that's just not enough for what this house needs? Well, it'd probably be okay for, you know, a one shower and maybe one washing machine running, but once you turn that jacuzzi tub on, it's not there. So uh, we're gonna put in some propane fuel units. What has the house got in terms of readiness for propane? Well, what we have outside is we have buried in the ground is a 120 gallon underground tank, and we have propane running through the house, and it comes right by where we're gonna install our water heaters, so why not do it? Right, okay. Now, this unit, um, from an efficiency standpoint, uh, it's only a five-year-old unit, but how much does it cost per year to, to kind of heat water here? Well, this unit is suggested by the U.S. government that it would cost on the average of $420 a year for operation. But take in mind, your homeowners at work or on vacation, he's still making hot water. Okay, so yeah, so even when nobody's using it, it's still firing up to keep hot water uh, in this tank. Yes, sir. Depending on where those thermostats are set, it's still maintaining temperature to maintain the temperature of the water in that tank. Okay. Now, walk us through the process of converting from this to the tankless units. What's the, what's the process or the steps of an installation? Well, basically we have, of course, outside we have the gas coming by. We want to do our installation, and we're going to hang the water heaters on the wall and vent them, hook up the gas, hook up the plumbing, and then we'll drain this water heater down and move it out, and the homeowner can gain that space. Okay, excellent. Well, we'll let you get to it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. So we're here with Mike Peacock from Renai. Mike, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Before Blossman gets going, I want you to run us through kind of the evaluation process that you have of a new construction or remodel before we put in a tankless unit. Well, there's a couple things we like to consider before we make the installation. First of all, we want to look where we're going to install the unit to determine whether it's going to be an interior exterior model. If it's an interior unit, then we want to see how, many, how much venting we need for the home, whether it's going to be horizontal or vertical, uh, because we can vent up to 41 equivalent feet either way. And then we want to determine the proximity of the gas lines to where the water heater is going to be installed and the water lines. In addition to that, we also want to look at the gas appliances in the home to see how much gas pressure is needed for our water heater to operate to its efficiency. And we also want to know how many water outlets there are in a home so we can determine the gallon per minute flow for each home so that we can give them our guarantee of endless hot water 24 hours a day. Okay, and that's with everything on? If we... Absolutely, with everything on. Okay, great. Thanks. As Mike said, they've already extended a propane supply line from a dedicated regulator at the propane tank buried near the garage to the location where the tankless units will be installed on the inside of the sidewall. Those units must be secured to a wall stud, as well as be accessible to the incoming supply line. The crew has installed sections of plywood fashioned to the studs to provide a more stable and flat work surface to mount the units. The water heaters also need to be positioned to enable a sealed combustion direct vent pipe through the sidewall of the garage. That pipe is designed to both supply and vent combustion air from and to the outside. To help installers locate key elements of the installation, the manufacturer supplies a template in the packaging if needed. The crew then hangs each unit on a center screw, checks for level, and fastens it in place using hex screws. So the units are now hung up on the wall, but before the crew comes back to hook up the venting and connect the water and the propane lines, we wanted to talk to Mike about these units in particular. Mike, tell us kind of what we've got here and kind of how they work. Well, we have two R75 units here that was determined by the needs for this particular home. They are residential units and we installed them on the interior. Now we're ready to install our vent piping. And we have our gas lines here and our water lines ready to hook up as well. Now, how do these tankless units differ in performance from the 40 gallon electric tank that we have in the, in the laundry room? Our difference is that we only heat water that you're asking for. And we only heat the amount of water that you're asking for. So we're not overusing any energy whatsoever. Now, you ran some calculations to size these properly. Correct. Why do we need two units for this house? The customer has a 124 gallon whirlpool tub. And in order for us to be able to furnish him with consistent hot water in all locations at the same time, it would take two water heaters because 
the Whirlpool tub has a five gallon per minute flow. When we talk about uh, tankless units, we, we, don't talk, we don't have to worry about recovery time. What is recovery time and how do these units address that? Well, recovery time on a tank water heater is when you've depleted all the water back, uh, all the hot water out of it, and then it fills up with cold water. Then it's the length of time it takes to heat that tank back to the desired temperature. With a tankless water heater, you don't have to worry about that because it only heats water when you ask for it. And there is no recovery time because once the water is heated, then it starts delivering hot water. Because a tankless water heater does not suffer from recovery time, it is able to deliver a constant supply of hot water at a selected temperature. But it is a misnomer that the hot water from a tankless unit is delivered instantly. In fact, no matter what water heating system you use, each shower or faucet or water appliance needs to go through the cold water sitting in its supply pipes before hot water starts to flow, a condition called lag time. But with a tankless unit, and especially two units working together to satisfy a peak demand situation, the owners will enjoy a constant supply of hot water at the temperature they choose. That's something no conventional water heater can match. Back in the garage, the crew is completing the various hookups and connections for the two tankless units, including the venting that is required for combustion appliances. They also run restaurant-grade flexible appliance connectors from the propane line to each tankless unit. The next step in the installation is to run the water line to the new tankless units. Okay, Mike, we're about ready to, to hook up the water supply lines and the water uh, distribution lines. Tell yes. us kind of how you're going to do that. Okay, what we'll do is we'll just come up from the floor and we brought our lines around to pick up the water heaters. We'll tie into the coal and tee off, pick up the cold here. And then we'll tie in the two hots to run back to supply the house as demand is needed. Using a new run of reinforced plastic supply lines, the installers cut and crimp fit the pipes and fittings together. Once the water is flowing to the new units, they'll test those connections to make sure they are watertight. The setup also includes isolator valves that allow the owner or a service technician to flush the units without affecting the rest of the house. The valves also enable the owners to connect a garden hose to the hot water of either tank, set the temperature on the controller, and wash a car, deck, driveway, or even a pet with warm or hot water. In areas with hard water conditions, consider a whole house water softening system, which will protect and prolong the life of the tankless units. Other water using products in the house, as well as your entire plumbing system, will also benefit. Next, the crew will run an electrical connection between the heaters so that they can communicate and share the load. For example, when the owners call for hot water, one of these units will fire first. If it reaches 80% capacity, the second unit will automatically fire up and both units will work simultaneously at 50% capacity. And after 10 cycles, the units will automatically switch that sequence with the second unit firing first for the next 10 cycles and so on. That way, the units will wear at an even rate, helping extend their design lives. Finally, the crew connects and extends some low voltage wiring from each unit for digital remote controllers in the laundry room and in the master bathroom, which we'll see and talk about in a few minutes. But before the crew can run water to and from the new water heaters, the old water heater needs to be removed. After shutting off the water main at the street and power to the electrical circuit serving the water heater, Mike drains the unit through the garage to the backyard. He then cuts the piping at the top of the tank, disconnects the hardwired connection to the electrical service box, and wheels the old water heater out of the way. The owner plans to donate it to Habitat Restore for a family who can use it. The new plumbing lines connected to the tankless units are then fitted to the existing supply and distribution lines in the laundry closet. So we're here in the master bath where Mike has put the finishing touches on one of the controllers in this house. Now we've got this one and where else? And we got one we're installing in the laundry room that we seen where the tank water heater was installed. Okay, now tell me what these controllers do. Okay, basically what both controllers allow you to do is turn the water temperature from 98 to 120 degrees for that particular area. Now, of course, if you're in here and you're using hot water, you'd push the priority button that would give this controller priority over the other controller and you'd be able to turn your water temperature with the water running from 98 to 110. As a scald feature that's built into it with the water running, you cannot go above 110 degrees. That way, if you was using the shower at 110, no one else could turn the water up and burn you because the object is to be using the hot water only. Right. And then also with the one installed in there, we need hotter water than what we had going in here to wash clothes or do some dishes. Then we can just reach over there and turn it on up to 120 by hitting the priority button. It gives that one the priority over the controller. And boom, you've got the 120 degree water. Okay. Now how many controllers can one of those units carry? Uh, we recommend the maximum of four controllers per household. Okay. In existing homes like this one, the ability to zone multiple tankless water heaters, basically assign each one to an area of the house, requires an extensive and expensive remodel of the home's plumbing system. For new housing, however, you can plan for zoning and plumb the house accordingly as you build. 
That might afford the owners a little extra energy savings and convenience. Here's an example. This isn't a large house, but a conventional water heater, or even one tankless unit in the basement, where most water heaters are installed, would result in some lag time for a hot water to reach the fixtures and appliances in the house, especially if more than one was being used at the same time. But if you install two tankless units, one in the basement and one on an outside wall, they could be zoned to cut lag time and, more important, deliver a constant supply of hot water and achieve the energy and water-saving benefits and convenience that tankless water heaters afford. These units are pretty smart, with checks and balances designed to ensure that they'll deliver their designed performance and convenience. Add to that the convenience, reliability, affordability, and other benefits of on-site propane to fuel these units, and you have a system with the potential to reduce water heating energy costs and greenhouse gas emissions by up to 60% and lower water use by up to 20%, depending on the owner's actual use and local utility rates. The work here is done. The cost to make this conversion was about $4,000, which was helped out a little bit by the fact that the owners had propane already on site and that the existing water heater was in pretty close proximity to where we installed the two new units, making those connections pretty easy. Homeowners can offset those costs and speed their return on investment by using tankless units that may qualify for state and local financial incentives, as well as rebates from utilities and propane companies for the safe installation of propane appliances. Well, that's it from Asheville. The two new tankless propane fueled units are on standby waiting to deliver hot water on demand and the owners are looking forward to that convenience throughout the house. I'd like to thank Blossman Propane Gas and Appliance and Renai for letting us come and follow this project and bring it to you. For the Propane Education Research Council, I'm Rich Bensaka. Thanks for watching.